Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Phenomenal Views. Now this is going to be probably like how I did last year, November, or Halloween in November, except it's going to be stretched out probably until December. Whew. Okay. First of all, show of hands, who likes the show Ghost Adventures? Second, who of all show of hands likes the game Outlast? Who of all show of hands likes P.T.? Who just watched a movie that was basically like a combination of the two? Okay. Guys, I strongly recommend you at nighttime, go on Netflix and watch the movie Grave Encounters. Grave Encounters is a movie about this. It's a found footage film, but it's not like uh, it's not like paranormal activity or anything like that. It's about like this producer who's talking about they had this show called Grave Encounters. And they had five episodes, and everything was going good until episode number six. Episode number six, they go to this uh, asylum. And, like, you know, they're talking about, like, how, uh, you know, there's everything's, there's bad things there. You know, there's the, the hauntings, ghosts, and they talk to the realtors and everything. It's like, oh, well, some people were here. They showed them the rooms. And on the door, it says, death awaits. And they're, like how in Ghost Adventures, they're locked down until morning. So they're basically, and and they show that this is all for show. They even have a psychic there who's in character. And so they found out that there's a girl who slid her wrist in the bathtub. There was a doctor who was very evil. And, I'm oh, just talking about it gives me the creeps. But okay, so basically they're walking out through the hallways and... They're filming everything, you know, they're making their episode, and then <clears throat> when they think something creepy happens, they open a the door and it's just rats. And the characters, we have Lance, who's the star of the show, we have Sarah and J, uh, or CT, who are his camera people, and then we have Matt, the advanced person, the per person who knows all the cameras and stuff. So... He's sitting down in the lobby, Matt is, and they're doing their investigation and everything. And when they get scared by the rats, Jay, um, Lance is like, this place is about as haunt scary as a sock drawer. So they decide, let's go pack some stuff up. Well, when it shows everyone down in the lobby, and there's also this window that opens, but it's locked, and but it keeps opening by itself. Um, there is a... There's a scene where they're all down in the lobby, and then all of a sudden the window opens up by itself. And when I first watched this, I didn't think anything of it. This is the second time I've watched it. I watched it during the day because I'm a wussy. Um, so then um, Lance, is, Lance is like, all right, here, Matt, let's just start picking everything up because the guy is supposed to come at 6 o'clock and, and let them out. So when Matt goes, he notices that the window's open, and he tries using the walkie-talkie, and they've actually been having interference. They can't talk with each other. All of a sudden, a couple hours later, Matt never comes back. But here's the scary thing about it. The sun was supposed to rise at 7.45, and they were supposed to be let out at 6 o'clock, right? The sun never comes up, and they are literally walking around the asylum for days. They are walking around the asylum for days, and it's just so freaking creepy. They like they look at their cell phones like this says that it's 8 p.m. But the sun has never come up. It's 7 a.m. Sun has never come up, and it's just really, really freaky. Now I bet you all are wondering, now Nick, what makes you what makes you think this is a combination between PT and um, and Outlast? Well, here's the Outlast part. One, you're in an asylum. Two, they're using video cameras. PT, here's the creepy thing. When they start packing up, scary things do start to happen. Um, their food rots. Um, when they're sleeping, a bunch of really creepy stuff happens when they're sleeping. Um, the girl Sasha, she wakes up and like she's the one who does the EVP, like asking where are you, who are you, did you live here, all that stuff. And when she does the voice recorder, nothing happens. But when they fall asleep and they wake up, she has hello scratched up her back. And her back is bleeding. And you really you really feel for these characters. Because this is a camera. Like, this is a camera crew. You feel for these guys. It's kind of like the people in Blair Witch. Oh, but my gosh. This was just so... This was so freaking creepy. 
And like when they were talking to the realtor earlier, the one who knows the place, there is a bunch of tombs under the asylum and it connects to many different buildings. But the thing is, as the night goes on, they get locked in. And one of the creepy things is they they decide um, CT's like or TC he's like you know what okay screw it I'm just gonna break the door down and I'm gonna escape so him and his friends use a gurney to open the door and actually the a gurney was the very first accident that happened because CT um, Lance is like here go we'll go walk around and like give us some fancy shots and then we'll be done when he's walking he gets a phone call. And it's his uh, wife or ex-wife, and he's having to talk to his daughter to calm her down. And he's like, they're trying to basically keep her from thinking that there's monsters. Oh, gosh. But when he's in the room, all of a sudden, the door closes on its own and freaks him out. And then uh, he gets all of his friends to come up there because he thought it was them. And then when they're all when they're in there, all of a sudden, there's this loud bang. And one of the hospital beds was pushed over and the wheels are still spinning and the the ghosts start playing with their minds it's it starts messing with them and it gets worse throughout the night um the bathtub where the girl slit her wrist when they their friend matt disappears right they fall asleep and they discover that they're they all have hospital bracelets on their wrist that has their name on them and Sasha is crying Sasha is scared and these actors really pulled this off and the thing is at the beginning of the film you don't really know much about these characters but you don't care you you don't really care about the characters but as things go on this really affects you and it affected me because just a lot of other creepy things like the first ghost that they see they see this woman who's in a hospital gown right and she's crying and and Lance goes over to comfort her all of a sudden she turns around and her mouth opens wide and her eyes and they just run they just run and they scream and when they're running their psychic that they had Houston which by the way one funny thing about this movie is every time they said Houston I wanted to say Houston 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 copy over I wanted to make space jokes but he gets separated and he's walking in the dark but you can see it because they set cameras like in the uh, on the walls and everything he can't see where he's going like he's just walking in the dark he's he's just walking in the dark and he starts getting choked by a ghost and then some flashlight kills him i i didn't really understand that death but it was still creepy and so as the nights go on he's um Lance, even though they're not making the episode, he's recording himself to document this. Is like, people are going to want to know what's really out here, what the paranormal is like. People are going to want to know this stuff. And and another, re and another thing, how this is kind of like PT. Okay, remember earlier when I was telling you how freaking um, TC was trying to get out? Okay, well, when they walk in the door in the very beginning of the movie, uh, it says, Death Awaits. So they use the gurney to open the door. And when they turn around, when they open, it's the hall, it's another hallway. And and that's the thing. This was the front door they came in. And when I seen this, I was like, oh my gosh, it's another hallway. And then they see the exit sign exit sign. They kick open the exit sign and it's just more hallways. They're running in an absolute, they're running in a loop. Like in PT, when you open the door and you come right back in. And it just, it made me think of PT. I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I just hope Lisa's not in this, I hope Lisa's not in this movie. <laughs> oh, but gosh, this movie was bone chilling. I mean, even watching it the second time, I got scared during the daytime watching this movie. Whew. Uh but um, uh, one other creepy thing. Now, basically, you kind of wonder, are they ever going to get out? Because, you know, they do everything. Like they try opening windows, screaming, let us out. But one of the things that you can basically tell these ghosts are never going to let them go is uh, CT says, when I was walking, uh, I seen there was a, a fire escape. So they start running up the stairwell. And when it says roof exit, they come to the final turn to where the door would be, and it's a it's a wall. Stairs leading to a wall. And I was like, oh my gosh, they're screwed. They're so freaking screwed. And the the ghosts have a different effect on each one of them. CT 
nothing really different with him. Um, Lance, he's having to stay strong. You know, he's going through a lot of stuff. He's trying to basically stay strong. With Sasha, it affects her the most because Sasha starts getting sick. Like, you know, she's like, I don't feel good. And they hear screaming in the asylum. They hear these weird noises. And they run down the hallway, and they finally they finally find Matt, but he's in a hospital gown. And like, where, where did you find this? What what's going on? And he starts saying like, they're like, Matt, do you know a way out? Where have you been? Have you did you find a way out? And he's like, there's a way out. We can leave when we're better. The the ghosts messed with him and made him believe he's a patient. This is after they've woken up and when they have the hospital bracelets on. But um. They all fall asleep in this one room, and they wake up, and there's just arms coming out of the ceiling and trying to grab them. There is another creepy scene, and this made me think of Silent Hill Downpour. Um, when they're walking down the hallway, they come past this door that's got like one of those, you know like how in uh, prisons, if they have people behind certain doors, they have glass window or they have windows, but like you can see through the window. They walk by it, and an arm just comes out and grabs her, and it scared me half to death. I was like, oh my gosh, this is too much like Silent Hill. Oh, but then they, then, when, when Lance is off by himself, he finds a tongue on the floor, and then he looks up, and there is a ghost patient on the ceiling, and it starts chasing, it starts chasing after him, so then they, they find an elevator shaft, and while Matt and Sasha are trying to hold the door, or not Matt and Sasha, Lance and Sasha are holding the door, Matt picks up the camera, and he commits suicide. And he's laughing before he does it. He starts laughing and then he just drops and he and he dies. And they thought he disappeared, but he didn't. Now, now you're wonder probably one now you're probably wondering what happened to TC. His death is the weirdest and the creepiest. Okay. When they when they're running from a cert when they're running because they heard screaming or they thought something was chasing after him, they run back into the bathroom that had the tub. They come back in there, and Lance sees there's something in the tub. There's blood in the tub. Like, the tub is full of nothing but blood. And Matt walks up to the tub, and TC's trying to get him away from it. And all of a sudden, this ghost just brings him in the tub. And so uh, Lance and Sasha push the tub over, and when they do, he's gone. Just a puddle of blood just pours all over the floor. And you're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. His death is so unexplained. It, it's there's it doesn't make any sense, but still it's interesting, but it's really freaking creepy. So now with uh, Sasha, she's not feeling good, and they decide they make it into the tunnels and they start walking in the tunnels, and they've been walking for hours and and, and days. And they've been they've been just walking around in a circle. The ghosts are not going to let them go. They're in a loop once again. PT. Um, when they're walking, all of a sudden, Sasha is on the ground, and she starts coughing, and then she actually starts spitting up blood. Like, Sasha Sasha is dying. She is, my gosh, when she started coughing up blood, I was like, oh, gosh, this really, really sucks. So he's making a recording of himself, and he's like, I don't know how long, how long she can go. And this was the only death that I thought was kind of cheap because, I don't know, maybe they ran out of ideas. But when they, they fall asleep in the tunnels, all of a sudden you see this mist, like the, like this um, this fog. And then when the fog disappears, Sasha's gone. And he starts making recordings of himself again. He's like, I've ran out of my full battery power. I only And he's using the camera as a light now. He's like, I only use it when I need to. I, and he's like, but I don't need to anymore. I just got to keep walking straight. Because he's basically like, I know this is never going to end until I die. I know this is never going to end. So then he's actually having to fend for himself for food. He's got a pole that he used to open the elevator shaft, and he, cr and he cracks a rat. And he's eating the rat while he's going insane. And he's watching, and he's recording himself again. And he's like, this was for you guys. And he starts, he starts swearing. And then he starts, uh, he hears something, and then he starts running. And then he says... I found the door. After all this time, I'm ready to go home. He found the door. He opens it, and it's the doctor's office. 
and he's walking around this office. He finds surgical tools. He he finds x-rays of bones and stuff. He finds skulls. And when he, he, he turns around and there's no one there. But then when he turns around again, he sees a doctor doing a lobotomy or some kind of surgery. And then when he turns away because he kicked over a skull, he looks up. The doctor looks at him. Eyes wide and the mouth wides. Movie ends. Oh, man. This was... This is one of the scariest found footage films I have actually ever watched. Only found footage films that have actually scared me are, at, are as I say, Paranormal Activity 3, Grave Encounters. That's it. Those are the only two found footage movies that I have watched that have scared me. I haven't finished VHS, but that's actually an interesting. That doesn't really scare me as it does pique my interest, but this actually scared me. Stupid PT and stupid Outlast. <laughs> Guys, put in the comments below, if you have watched Grave Encounters, what did you think of it? What is your favorite found footage film? Um, during the rest of what days of October or November we have left, I'm hoping to get Grave Encounters 2, VHS, and Annabelle, and also you guys can expect a review of Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1. Guys, I hope that, please hit that like button and make this channel grow. Guys, have a good day.